feels like. No, it's um, true. It, I don't know. It just maybe I'm 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 just not in it, and I don't see it. I guess, and maybe we're we're re- reminiscing about our youth, and maybe it's felt like there was more kids surfing. When we were younger, because maybe there weren't as many older people. There weren't people, as many so. older people. There weren't because yeah. uh, because of the longboard revo- the longboard revival hadn't fully come into effect right, right. until like the late nineties. Right, where it, people where the riding a longboard was acceptable, and then most people could actually go out and catch a wave. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, you know. So I wonder. Like I always, yeah, it's funny. Like, do you do you still have any like? team riders or kids that, that like a, ride for you a little, little bit but we've gotten away from that model and you know you hate to say but like the local our local shops will like promote and promote a kid yeah but you know local board builders but when they get good they're going to move on to the bigger companies yeah. right so they help you out for a little bit and you help them out for a little bit but they eventually kind of move on yeah you know I don't know. John John's stuck with Pizel. <laughs> well, he's not a little guy. <laughs> but he Pizel's was a with big him. Company. But Pizel made it for him when he was like, you know. He's, John no, John's what made him famous, exactly. right? Exactly. And made him have a, a thousand orders in backlog or whatever. See, see, when you just bring the kids in, you just say, look, like, I'm going to sponsor you, but you have to be with me at least for 10 years, okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to make you backlog pay me for all the boards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You should do that. <laughs> what yeah. um, what have you seen? Stand up paddleboard is it still as peaking as it was a few years ago, or are you seeing? No, that it, scale it back? really hit. I think it hit the top of the of the market in like 2012. Yeah, right. 2013, mm-hmm. and then we watched the downward turn yeah. of everyone. We got the influx of all the cheap stuff, and right? Then all the kooks going on. And you on drive and around, and mom cool. and dad both have them in the garage already. Yeah, you know, th- you know, everyone that is a water sports family, they have one or two or three it kicking became around. A cool toy, as opposed to right. a sport or right. lifestyle. Right, exactly. And then as far as the guys doing stand up in the ocean, you yeah. know, you still have the the hardcore guys you see in you know in Long Beach, yeah. and in Montauk Alex and around Michael here. And exactly, like and Edgar yeah. and stuff. But like, I don't know. A lot of those guys went back to riding a regular board, and I kind of did too. I tried it, you know, and I'll, I still like to do it on like a really small, mushy day, yeah. just for the exercise and the challenge of digging the paddle and getting a good turn and yeah. going off the lip into the sand and stuff. I find it fun, but it's more for like for the novelty of it. It's yeah. like riding the skimboard. Yeah, it's not something I'd want to do every day, you know. But I think a lot of times too, the older guys that are in like their seventies that are still surfing, yeah. they almost need to just do stand up yeah. because they they can't pop up in their back, and it's great for them because it's been a it's been a rejuvenation of their soul to totally. be able to still surf, you know. So I have nothing against it. I, I have it against the, the one thing I have it against is the, the guys that I see in in Rockaway. <laughs> try to paddle out in a crowded lineup oh, yeah. and they're not as skilled already and you're no. like why are you here there's yeah. you know down the beach yeah. there's an empty peak for you totally they you don't know? fit in the in the lineup they should be down the beach or yeah spread it's out. it's just like kind of inconsiderate and, and dangerous I, very I dangerous feel like. yeah what about foiling now have you you've kind of dabbled in this yes so the crazy thing is I, I could show you the picture from 2005 when I did uh, the aluminum foil yeah, yeah. behind Charlie With, Weimer's boat. Did you did you have like snowboard boots? Yeah, and, snowboard boots the, the and, clicker and boots? bindings <laughs> clicked in and we'd go behind the boat and holy cow, that thing was so heavy and so dangerous. <laughs> yeah. And at that time, I, I, wanted, I brought it to a machine shop yeah. and I said, can we make these out of aluminum? Which I didn't know. Yeah. We didn't have carbon fiber, yeah. so I didn't know if you could make them out of... Uh, anything else i didn't think to make it out of fiberglass but so i brought the foil to a bunch of machine shops from like farmingdale around here and they said you know what that thing's gonna cost like three thousand dollars to make <laughs> so i was like this isn't gonna work yeah you know? and so it's, and then we thought it was gonna take off at that point and it never did yeah until when did it take off a couple of years ago yeah. right and then so since then we've we've experimented with it but i've been hit with it pretty hard too a couple of times so it i'm looks kind dangerous. of scared it looks scary have you done it I have not. I've dream. I have, I have dreams, like literal dreams, like not daydreams. Like I've dreamt about surfing certain spots that will remain unnamed uh-huh. on a foil, and like, like flying. Yeah, and like yeah. I'm just like that must feel amazing. I've seen people surf 
a certain spot on it with it. Right. And I'm like, that's amazing. It must feel right. unreal. But, uh, yeah, I really would love to try it one day, you know? And, like, I would definitely, one day, I would definitely want to try it. But uh, I have not had the opportunity. Yeah. You know, is it... It's hard. It's hard. You, like, you have to... It's counterintuitive. It is. It's a different, totally different feel. Like, you have to lean almost forward because forward. the foil wants to go up. It wants to shoot out, yep. And you're like... So, you, if you're a front-footed surfer, it might actually work well for you, you think? Right. Or yeah, more snowboarder? For, more for... Yeah, it's more of that same feel of, like, snowboarding. Right. And the front foot. That's what I... It looks but like... But again, I'm not, an, I'm not an expert yeah. on it because I've just, like, done it a handful of times and hurt myself, so... <laughs> <laughs> but are you making them? Are you making the foil? Yeah, we're making foil boards. The foils themselves, I made a couple of molds, and That's we were going to start making them. And I said, you know what? I'm going to leave that up to someone else because it was just you need it was a, too much. You need computer. You need fancy computers for that. I think. Yeah. yeah, you need to like you need like Boeing level kind of <laughs> you know modeling. Yeah. Of scene flow and all that to make the rake and make the those right. wings work right i think you know it's not something you could really do by hand no and get it as it as, wouldn't be as accurate to, yeah. to shape those by hand i mean maybe the machine like i had a guy that you borrowed our shaping machine yeah. to make model airplane stuff That's like awesome. an rc jet and he was foiling out the wings of an rc jet oh. on the mach- on the machine so that was that was a few years ago, but it, the machine could do that, but it doesn't pay to set up to make no. to make foils. I'll you know, but the the foil boards we do, yeah. we do a few a year, you know, maybe twenty a year or something. How small are they? How, like uh, what is that like? Because you're really trying to make something small as possible, but paddleable too, right? As small as possible, as th- like really thick scoop on the deck and that sh- that really beveled rail yeah and a lot of people want like a roll in the bottom and then the beveled rail they say it's more like a hull design on a boat mm. you know you you don't you don't want any concaves on the bottom of that thing you don't want anything to stick yeah you want it to just come right up and the board really i mean they say you could the guys that are really good they don't even need the board they could yeah. like have a two by four on yeah. the foil yeah. and ride it um so they want to go as small as possible like four you know, four two, four six, whatever we've been doing, a lot of like around that size. But like you said, twenty something wide and like four and something thick. We're getting them up to about sixty liters. So we have to make a four foot six that's sixty liters. So, so you're basically taking that old door board you used to make. And yeah, the door it was it like down, the door. Basically. Well, the stand up planks work out great because we cut them right, th- right yeah. in half. And we get two out of them. Oh my god, you could you could do like three, four boards three out, four of out of the stand up. Theoretically, you could just cut horizontally into those into the the stand up boards and just take chunks of right, like that. Right, you know? exactly, exactly. Here, you know what you do to help with that lift: golf ball dimple bottom, like that we were talking yeah, about before. That's a good idea. That'll get you the lift out. In that's the air. a good idea. <laughs> that would work for me. The foiling really became like this is cool when I saw the guys like on the West Coast do it like in california doing, yeah, yeah. doing like they're putting their california style spin onto it you know like kind of classic carves and stuff yeah yes. grabbing the rail yeah. kind of cutting and like doing like the skateboard bertelman kind of esque yeah. kind of you know dogtown turns on them like that to me was just like this is beautiful yeah it's cool you know the, the, but do you think it's gonna blow up like stand up did it too can't hard. because it's too hard it's it too is. hard it's too dangerous it's dangerous uh, i think you you need a boat to really learn, I feel totally. like, to tow behind it before you can really do it on totally. a wave. Otherwise, it's going to be a really difficult learning curve. Right. Um, I've seen it drop off, too. You I feel so? like I've seen, like, on social media, it's become more of a novelty for some And it was surfers. a fad at first. It was, like, really cool. And and you saw, like, loyal to the foil <laughs> type of yeah. hashtags and yeah. stuff. And they're like, this is it. This is the new thing. And I think... Maybe they realize there's a limitation to it, yeah. <laughs> you know, because really how much... I know. I'm like, I'm watching a guy in, in uh, West Hampton a couple of months ago. He's on this little four foot foil and he's getting himself up. He's cranking down the line. He's doing great. Cranks himself back out into the lineup, gets another one. Yeah. 
And I'm looking at it like, when is he going to bottom out? Because the wave was small and yeah. how shallow it is, yeah. right? I had um, the lift foils. I tell you this, we had, no. we had one of those electric lift foils oh. and we put LED lights in it. So that was another engineering project. I had to like route out the bottom <laughs> of the, the foil and I had to make a control for it and everything. And we put LED lights in the bottom of it so they could foil at night, yeah. lift foil at night. And I did the lift foil in the canal where I grew up and it was just the coolest thing. It felt like I'm flying in the canal. I never thought I'd be flying. Wow. It, you should try the, the E foil. That sounds cool. It's an amazing feeling. But I stuffed that thing in the mud coming around the turn, you know, in like <laughs> in like two foot of water and I stuffed it and, and flipped, you know, over the Ten handlebars. Grand down the <laughs> tubes, right? And the thing's just standing there. It's just standing there, you know, elevated two feet out of the water, wedged in the mud. I pulled Pulled it out of the mud and it didn't break the foil or anything and the motor still worked and everything. That's the guy, um, the guy in Puerto Rico. Yeah. That makes them. And um, I mean, he he did an amazing job with that thing. That thing is unbelievable. I mean, it's forty volt battery. I wow. think. Um, That's crazy. You know, you can you wash out the inside with the hose. How long does the battery last for? You think the battery the battery lasts a good a good hour or two. Fuck. Yeah, and the learning curve on it, it's so much easier than doing regular foiling. So that's the foiling we really did like yeah. all last summer and into the fall was yeah. the e foil. <laughs> <laughs> but that must be kind of liberating, right? Like you can go to some places that you wouldn't normally surf. Exactly. Like certain, you know, like that bar between, you know, Moses and, and uh, you know, Cedar Beach. Right. You know, that is all open for surfing now with no crowds right like you that's go out there amazing. fly out there on the thing and ride ride some waves and fly back out it's it's cool i'll try and get it back this summer yeah. if you want to try it yeah hell yeah <laughs> now have you exp what what are some experiments that have failed for you for surfboards that have you've done that like just you you had an idea you drove around and re and you engineered it while you're driving <laughs> you know and like what have you What have you done that's like been like just didn't it didn't work? Well, this there's one I'm still working on now that I'm uh, it's it's a I'm trying to invent a glassing machine, and I don't uh, know how. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, the reason is there's you know, no there's laminators the, out there's no, there. There's no laminators out there. You know, most of my cost to run my business is labor. Yeah. And it's hard to find skilled labor. It's hard to train young kids that want to do this stuff. Everyone says they want to. After a week of being covered in dust, they quit. You know, <laughs> so this would be a way to make to make our process so much easier. Yeah. And if if there was a glassing machine, that glassing machine could be in Rockaway. That machine could be anywhere. Anywhere. And you still might have to do some finish work, but people could just drop their blanks off. And someone, someone that's maybe more of a computer programmer, like yeah. we have more computer program type people these days than we yeah. do someone that wants to run a squeegee up and down a board. So if we could get a glassing machine, but I've had failed attempts yeah. trying to do what, it. And then I just get upset and I go back, oh, we had too many boards to make anyway. <laughs> what, what um, you know, you, you could choose to share if you want, but what are some of the, the difficulties that you, you come up with? Well, with here's, that? here's one idea that I think might work or might fail. Yeah. So if you had the glass made into a Chinese finger puppet sock, you know, yeah. this thing that, you know, you pull on it, grab yeah. your finger. If the glass was woven that way, yeah. in a, in a, in theory, yeah. you could sleeve the board. But that's what they do with skis. And twist it. Yeah. Just like skis. So, so like I went to the K2 factory in Seattle where they make all the prototypes. I saw their carbon weaving machine. What they do right. is it's a big rotary machine and each little thing has a has a fiberglass weave, you know, like a like a string of fiberglass right. on it and they put the 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 blank, the ski blank through it and this thing twists and turns around it as it goes through and so it makes it really tight fit right. around the 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 ski and it creates the biaxial or triaxial tri weave on weave. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it creates a sock around it. But it's not an actual sock. Like, it's woven around the board. Right. It was a pretty big... You need. You should look online at, like... See if you can find the machinery, at least, for the idea. Because that, that's very possible. It and is possible. It's totally possible. And I think when they make um, they make the paddle shafts... Yeah. They have... Yeah, you see that you see it weaving in a in a in a motion, mm -hmm. and why couldn't the blank be roll be slowly rolling into that weave? Yeah, as it's wetting out. Mm. When it gets wet out, 
I don't know, but maybe it could go through that process and go to the mm. end, get a snip, and go in the oven. Yeah. Get a light sand and a hot coat. Now you have something stronger. You have better flex characteristics. Like you don't that. need a stringer. Yeah. And you and you you you've basically automated you've automated the lamination process. That's yeah. one process you've helped automate. You can now make make surfboards uh, not affordable, but you can make better profit margin.